This is the story of the world's most stolen artwork, the Ghent Altarpiece, or Adoration of the Mystic Lamb, who bleeds over a grail in a flower-speckled meadow. And who's adoring this lamb? Soldiers, judges, clergy, God, John the Baptist and Mary, a gospel choir, bespangled chorister angels, Adam, Eve, Cain and Abel all showcased in two vertical registers of panels complete with foldable wings with paintings on either side. This two-ton masterpiece by Jan and Hubert van Eyck is so brilliant and arresting, it's been rightly compared to a rock opera. So who stole the Ghent altarpiece? Well, with a history as dramatic as the work itself, this segment might actually be shorter if I just told you who didn't steal it. But we're here now, so... First culprit? The Calvinists. In 1566, a group of rampaging, icon-burning Calvinists tried to steal the entire work from St. Barbo's Cathedral and burn it to the ground. Unfortunately, they let the cat out of the bag and guards were able to foil their plan by hiding the work before they showed up. But that was just the beginning. In 1794, Napoleon got his grubby mitts on four of the panels and hauled them back to the Louvre. After he was defeated at Waterloo, Louis XVIII returned them to say... Sorry. In 1816, an extremely naughty vicar reportedly stole a couple of wings and flogged them to an art dealer. Naughty boy. True or not, those pieces found their way to a museum in Berlin. A hundred odd years later, they were returned as part of the Treaty of Versailles. In fact, the bits and pieces of the Ghent altarpiece were always returned, except once. The greatest unsolved mystery of the Ghent altarpiece came sometime in the night on the 10th of April 1934, when the panel The Just Judges was removed from St. Barbo's Cathedral. The next day, a crowd gathered to look at the imperfect masterpiece. Among them was the Belgian police commissioner. Unfortunately, he couldn't investigate it for very long because he was called away to another robbery at a local cheese shop. If I want to find the cheese, I must think like the cheese. So what happened next? Well, ransom notes were sent to the Bishop of Ghent, who refused to cough up the thousand franc demand. Then, to prove to authorities that they had it, the thieves ripped the painting of John the Baptist off the back of the panel, remember those foldable wings? And left it at the checked baggage department of Ghent station but that still wasn't enough to catch the culprit. And then new evidence emerges. It's November 1934. A stockbroker has a heart attack and an attack of the guilts. He summons a lawyer to his deathbed and says, I alone know where the mystic lamb is. The information is in the drawer on the right of my writing table in an envelope marked mutualité. <gasps> what did the note say? It rests in a place where neither I nor anybody else can take it away without arousing the attention of the public. Which simply wasn't enough for anyone to figure it out. We still don't know where that pesky panel is. The Ghent altarpiece also has the honour of being the artwork most desired by the Nazis, which I've got to say kind of makes me hate it. It wound up in a collection of over 12,000 artworks that Hitler planned to put in his Super Museum, a city-sized gallery he envisioned to house all his stolen artwork. So why did Hitler love the Ghent altarpiece so much? Well, there are three theories. Firstly, it was painted in the Third Reich's favourite Northern Renaissance style. Secondly, Hitler was super salty about the Treaty of Versailles and wanted revenge. And thirdly, this bloke reckoned the Ghent altarpiece contained some type of a map that would lead him to treasures that would give him supernatural powers. After this theft, it was eventually recovered by the Monuments Men. And now the Ghent altarpiece is all back together. Except for that one bloody panel. Oh, someone forgot to take the bins out. Jeez, oh, everything around here. 